Hello everybody, my name is Aceface and we're going to be testing out a slightly different Gila fit for T4 Firestorm Abyss. This right here is the fit that I've been often using for Firestorm Abyss. It's the T4 Hybrid Gila which is using a shield booster and then also a, a passive recharge right? with like the field extenders right here and the large shield extender. And I think this is quite good when you're not using any implants because this actually works without any implants at all. It can get a little bit hairy at times but it does work without implants. But actually, my clone right now is using high grade Nirvanas. So it increases our passive recharge a lot. So we actually have equal, even more HP per second in terms of the passive to the shield boost rate. Now, something I did is a calculation in a uh, program called Piffa. It's like a program where you can uh, load fits. And actually, we get about the same and even a bit more uh, HP per second if we just go full passive since we've already got the high grade Nirvana implants. The Nirvana implants they boost our like passive shield capabilities. So that's why what I want to try here is I want to go with like a full uh, passive style because another reason is that they buffed like the resist profile to resist so now the resists on ships are actually going to be a bit better than they were previously and it's going to make you have to be able to have an even bigger buff than before. So I think it'll just be fun to see what we can put on this ship right here. So we're going to remove these two large shield extenders. There's two modules right there, but shield extender. Let's get some bison. We don't have any in here. Large shield extender. Put these in here. We'll see 122k EHP. So this is no joke right here. Uh, so yeah, the passive recharge is 111. The reason I want to have the passive shield uh, uh, amplifier is because, uh, or the thermal shield amplifier is because uh, without the cap battery we had before, we're a lot more susceptible to newts. So if we were to get newts down, all our resist modules are going to get turned off. And that's not going to be a good time. So that's why I want to put a Pythium A-type thermal shield amplifier. Oh, they're quite expensive, actually. Hmm. Because, you know, we've got the Gist X-type here, which is quite a bit better. I want to just check something real quick before we try that. Because we could put a Nosferatu here. And if we put a good Nosferatu... We might be able to like just get enough capacity that newts don't really matter so we can keep it going. Or we can almost put a medium Nosferatu right here. We can put a compact one. Ooh. Dark blood medium. Oh, almost dark blood medium. Look at that. One one power grid overloaded. I guess we can go with this compact one over here. Since it's going to provide some decent bonuses to our capacitor than over this uh small one we got right here well, the small one is not that bad but the medium one will be a lot better so we can fully utilize our power grid we've got to spare right here there we go okay we can then i guess keep the thermal shield amplifier i can always overheat it if we were to really need that we'll go out here outside of jita and test our ship the main issue I have with like fully passive ships is that over a hybrid tank is that say we take damage, we're going to often hover around like half to maybe 60% HP around this region, maybe even less, because the HP per second up here is very low. It's only when you get like down here, it's the, the HP per second is very high. When you're up here, just like the HP per second is really bad. You hardly have any HP per second. So this almost just goes down straight away and you're like constantly here. So your buff is going to be naturally almost always, well, your buff is never really going to be maxed, like what it says. We're going to try it anyway. We're going to try it anyway. And if we die, we die. We lose our full high grade Nirvana set, but I think it should be good because the sheer amount of buff we've got. Okay, we've got some Eden Com over here. Let's go here. We'll go for the, we'll maybe go for the Enforcers or something, since they're going to get in range close. But it would be nice to take out the, the markers over here. Let's move here and grab the bioadaptive cache. Those hammerheads just got their shields nuked because of them being in range of the intro or the of the Vorton projectors. Not so nice to see, but that's just the way it is. And we can probably after this guy go for the Thunder Child because they're really recharging their shields to a big degree. Oh no, hammerheads, they're getting slapped due to the Vorton projectors. Oh, we can have these guys do a bit of friendly fire on themselves. Wait until the next volley is gone, then we'll uh, start shooting. Okay, Thunder Child, this barrel is hit. Let's go. Go for this uh, Thunder Child over here. Like that. We've already lost like 20% of our shields. And the recharge per second is very low here. I mean, we do get some recharge, but it's very low. Very, very low. Grab this. And keep going. 
Yes. Oh, that was a 3.5k damage shot from the hammerhead over there. It's quite crazy. A wrecking shot I saw right there. Uh, we're gonna take out this guy right there. We need a Nosferatu a bit if we need to, but now we can't really do anything because we're not really getting used to that. We have to have a very low capacitor for the Nosferatu to kick in, otherwise it won't work. It's pretty nice seeing our shields. Are like, we have lost only 30%. Popped. We're gonna split the drones up a bit like that. The great thing about having big buff, I mentioned this a lot, but it sort of buys you time. Even though your retard may not be a lot, but if you have a big buffer, that is time spent that you will be able to kill the enemy ships and reducing their incoming DPS. There is a benefit to having buffer. It's just not always optimal when it comes to like HP per second, but you can buy some time by going for a bit of a buffer fit. Let's see what we've got here. I think Triglavians are going to cause a bit of a problem. Let's see now. Yeah, there we can move here. Take the tanky drones go for the abyssal over mine straight away just have them work on him uh, have our missiles take out the snare casters over here should be easy where's our ehp we should have a tiny slight increase in our ehp in the firestorm site no never mind because of the the firestorm resist being nerfed you're being webbed even webbity web Land a volley right here. Just have to be a bit careful that we don't take too much damage because I feel like it's a lot easier to get complacent when you're using passive fits because you just suddenly feel like, oh, my shields are just they're full all the time. And suddenly you take a lot of shots after a while, it'll, it's going to be suddenly low shields. And when you've got low shields in a passive fit, you're in big trouble because you never want to be low shields because it's really hard to get it back up if it's very low. With like a shield booster fit, you can still like overheat your way out of there, but not here. You can only overheat your hardness, but your when you go below like 25-30% then you've got very low shield HP recharge per second let's grab this 7 million okay it seems like this uh, huddle abyssal overmind is quite bricky he's quite bricky indeed <laughs> we are taking some penetrating shots from him it's not nice to see but that's the way it is sometimes you know Got a little bit to the side like this. The great thing about having a big buffer is that if you have max shields, you can resist ganks a lot easier. But that's just if you have your buffer max. You could maybe have your buffer up low and then exit the abyssal side, and then it'll not be good. But you could always maybe take a few, a couple of minutes if you're extra worried about abyssal ganks just to recharge your shields to a more appropriate level. It's going to take you a long time to get to max shields. A long, long time. Just due to the nature of passive fits, how they have low recharge up here. With uh, the optimal uh, recharge per second, uh, when you in fact in like Omni damage, we have like 300 DPS tanks, something like that. So it's all right, considering the buffer is good. For an active tank, that will be a bit low on the low side, but for a real big buff fit like we got here, it's on the high side, I think. Take out Abyssal Overmind. Really, his armor is just taking forever to get through because of the Firestorm's punishing thermal armor. Uh, in reinforcement and then it's also a minus 50% as well which is not as good for time but I mean we're still chugging through because we've got pretty high DPS oh we're using Federation Navy hammerheads that's also contributing to our load clear time right here they're already taking care of him so I'm not going to bother switching otherwise I should have been using the tech twos got a wrecking shot right there we should be going towards the side but he's getting some very good tracking on us unfortunately Okay, there we go. We can recall our drones. Use the, we can just use the Federation Navy Hammerhead. It's not like it's going to make a big difference using Tech 2 or whatever. Just to keep in range, that's all. Use the, the missiles to take out these small ones over here on the side. Okay, it's unfortunate that our Tech 2 drones got absolutely blat splattered by <laughs> those uh, the Eden Calm waves before. Just the way it is. Recall drones. Next wave. 60% shield HP, so it's not a whole lot of shield HP we've got left. Effialtus cruiser wave, okay. Let's go here. 
can use our hammerheads. Take care of them. The thing is, like you see here, we've got low HP. It would take a lot less time to boost our shields up to max when you have. Oh, you should take actually augmented hammerheads. It'll take a lot less time to get back up to max the shield shield booster because we now we're approaching a point where our shield HP per second is very low. With the uh, booster, it'll be high all the time. Or it'll be constant all the time, boosting all the time. Look at these ghosters, I think. And no neuters, I see. Nah. It's okay. You could also use a purger, like a purger 2s, to so give you more a recharge per second, but you'd have less buffer. I feel like in high second, it might be better to have a bit more buffer so you can have, like, more gank resistance. Since the incoming DPS usually dwarfs how much recharge you have, so. Recharge is not going to play as big of a role in surviving the gank, rather it's the amount of raw HP you have That you've like sort of gathered over the time you are just waiting there to get it all to recharge back up I can shoot on volley here. What's our DPS? It's 97 DPS I thought that was a good mutaplasmin right there. No, no, it was not. It was a decayed one Unfortunate, unfortunate got an armor plate mutaplasmid once large a large one it was really it was worth a lot 200 million really crazy half our ship back just from that one module but so far it feels like uh, i don't like the idea of having like half our shields like this all the time i feel like it would overall be better to use the hybrid fit i'm just feeling like the seeing our shields low like this doesn't feel good it feels like we're wasting a lot of our ship's capabilities instead it would be better i think to just go with a hybrid fit have our shields a max all the time and uh, i feel like you've uh, a bit more safe in the hybrid fit because also if you somehow get your shields very low you can still like overheat the boost and try overheating your boosts up if you lose your shields in uh in a passive fit they're really never gonna go up unless you do so, like take no damage for an extended period of time i feel like it would be better but it's nice knowing that okay i can have 120k ehp tank but still i feel i feel like it would be better in practice just to have the uh, hybrid fit where you have maybe 69k esp but this is going to be 100 percent all the time i mean it is i mean i guess it would be similar hp ehp we would have since it would be but uh, we've got 120k with the hybrid tank it's 100 and uh, or 69k it's a little bit over half and that's the shield hp we're at most time a little bit over half so i think maybe the ehp would be similar It'll be similar. I feel like it might be a bit safe in some ways using the hybrid. You've got that cam battery, you've got the ability, as I said before, to boost up when you've got low shields. Makes you a bit more flexible, I think. I could be wrong. Pop this Aegis over here. There we go. And we can always like wait a little bit here, get our shields, shield HP to a higher level. If we wanted to. Okay, let's jump out right here. Okay, there we go. So T4 Firestorm in a full-on buffer gear. Trying to see what we can achieve after that like surgical strike reversal. We'll see if we can get some really big buffer increases. It's alright, but I feel like uh, I think a hybrid might be a bit better, a bit safer. But it has a bit more flexibility, I think. Where do you, but it's nice to see 122k EHP, that is really quite a thing to see. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.